My name is Private Investigator Jack Molloy, freelance student detective. It was Christmas Eve, and I'd been working like a dog, generally chewing things to bits and urinating up the wall. Student detectives don't get many holidays, you see, so I'd been working down to the bone. I then ate the bone because I'd been working like a dog. It's all circular, you see. Christmas means many things to many people. That's just maths. Lots of people see it as a celebration of the birth of Christ, although as birthdays go, it's possibly the most posthumous in history. And what would you give the Son of God for his birthday? I don't know, but I read that he died for our sins, so presumably someone gave him some Garnier products somewhere along the line. All the people bang on and on about how commercial Christmas is, which makes me regret how crystal clear the sound is on the plasma TV screen I watch them on. Then there are the group of people who see Christmas as an opportunity to be nice to your family. It makes me shudder to think what these people are like for the rest of the year if the concept of being nice is an opportunity. I don't know about you, but I'm nice to people all year round. When Christmas carolers come to my door, I say, Booger off, thank you. You see, you've got to be polite. I've also noticed that during the Christmas period there is a worrying kind of epidemic in which people accumulate vast quantities of dirt on their bodies. What other, what other possible explanation could there be for the large amount of shampoo, lotions and soap that people receive at Christmas? This is a tradition that stretches back to the very first Christmas, where Jesus got gold off one of the wise men and a frankincense and myrrh aromatherapy kit off the other two. Merry Christmas, Mr. Scrooge. Malloy, it's Lieutenant Dakowitz here. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, sorry, I appear to have made a Freudian slip. What appears to be the penis, sir? Malloy, I called to remind you that you agreed to work on Christmas Day. <laughs> sir, I don't want to imply senility, but I'm sure I would have remembered if I agreed to do something as monumentally as stupid as that. Well, I remembered and you didn't, so who's the senile one now, huh? It's a wonder Santa hasn't gotten dementia given how old he is. I mean, he's got one of the most managerial jobs in the world. Don't change the subject, you promised. Now that I think about it, sir, I have an inkling I may have made this agreement under office party conditions where I was marginally intoxicated. That is it, May. A deal's a deal. In the meantime, we have murder to investigate. I'm faxing you the details. That's uh, rather redundant, sir. I don't have a fox machine. Ah. Well, in that case, you'll get a telegram of a very out-of-breath boy. Christmas is a time where a lot of strange combinations come to the fore. Family relations who are never going to cooperate in a million years. Toys come with instructions not comprehensible by anyone in the Western world. Or Christmas jumpers with practically anything. Brussels sprouts and taste buds don't seem to mix either. But Christmas and murder is downright wrong. Nevertheless, that was what I was faced with. I can't believe what I'm looking at here, Dakowitz. Such mutilation. It looks like someone's just got one of these razor-sharp knives and just hacked away at him. His skin looks pretty badly burnt too. For God's sake, Malloy, that's the Christmas turkey. The victim is through here. His name was Stan Rinch. What's his name now? It's still Stan Rinch. Apparently, he was an annual inductee on Sanders' naughty list, so someone hung him from the ceiling with a piece of tinsel. Tinsel? Well, that must have chafed. Oh, really? Well, somehow I don't think he enjoyed it either. How can we have a motive before we have a suspect? Forensics just finished analysing the results of his Christmas stocking 12 months previous. Look for yourself. Uh-huh. This looks like coal, all right. As of yet, we have no other leads. Well, leads are really hard to find at Christmas, sir. They usually get lost in all the wrapping paper. Batteries, too. I meant leads that might progress the case. D Good Lord! Mr. Rinch isn't dead after all, sir. Look! Ah, uh, no, Malory. This is Tad, Stan's twin brother. 
we asked him down here to help with our inquiries. I'm so sorry for your loss, Mr. Inch. If it's any consolation, all you have to do is look into a mirror, and you'll see your brother's face as you knew him. That's very poignant, sir, but I've just smashed all the mirrors in my house for that very reason. Oh, uh, wouldn't that give you bad luck? Yeah, we realise that. We're in the process of cutting off rabbit's feet just to compensate. Grief does strange things to people, sir. Uh, yeah. Perhaps Mr. Wrench would be better off back at the station before he gets hysterical. I don't think it's very funny at all, sir. Neither do I, my lord. You must be so pedantic. You go on ahead, sir. We'll start digging around here. Yeah, tidy up your garden. It's the least we can do. I meant search for more clues, Malloy. <laughs> ah, yes, of course. Goodbye, Mr. Inch. Uh, what clues would they be, sir? Well, we won't know their clues until we find them, will we? Right, let's turn this place upside down. I think I preferred the furniture on the floor, Malloy. Get those down off the ceiling. You're right. There aren't many homes that can pull it off. I know. Let's check their phone call history. Now you're talking. You look at his mobile. I'll check the answer machine. Ah, this looks promising, sir. Someone using the code name Orange has been making him offers. Could be a blackmail case. You're barking up the wrong tree, Malloy. That's the phone company. Well, uh, what did you find? A breakthrough. Several threatening messages on the machine. The mystery browbeat said that unless Stan changed his ways in a notably Dickensian way by the dawn of Christmas Eve, he'd get it in the neck. And, he, and they followed through, as you can see. Mystery browbeat. They disguised their voice with a Cyberman voice changer. Could have been anyone. Well, they were a Doctor Who fan. That narrows it down to just over 10 million suspects. Well, you better narrow it down, Malloy. I want this case solved by Christmas Day. Um, why? Do I need a reason? Yes. No, I don't. I'm your superior. Now get it done. So, that was my ultimatum. I had to solve the case in just over 24 hours, or else... Um... Or else the case wouldn't be solved in 24 hours. It's not really much of an ultimatum, really. More like a... Well, whatever. I decided to go home and get some rest, replenishing my energy so I could rise early on Christmas morn with a clear head. Before I went to bed, I ate an underdone potato just to send me to sleep. However, later on that night, in what can only be described as plagiarism, the sound of ghostly chains was heard at the door. Here, you Jack Malloy? Who's asking? I am, mate. You ordered these ghostly chains off eBay? You belated oaf. These were supposed to be here at Halloween. You made me think that Marley's ghost was at the door. Lord knows we don't need another comedic take on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol after every other TV show has done it instead of thinking up their own ideas. Marley's ghost? You eating an underdone potato or something? What? There's someone called Marley here to see you. Hello, Malloy old fruit. Jake and Molly here. Completely unrelated to you know who, of course. What? Who? Huh? Hey? He? Hi? Who? Where? Huh? Huh? Hey, I've never met you before in my life. No, Mr. Malloy, you haven't. But if you went by the logic of not talking to people you'd never met before, you wouldn't get very far, would you? Just get on with it. I'm a private investigator, not a Dickensian moneylender. And you don't seem to be Jacob Marley, Jacob Marley, so who are you really? Oh, my name is Jacob Marley, all right. Just as eggs is eggs. I'm just not the Jacob Marley from A Christmas Carol. I was raised in the poshest end of, um, where posh people live. 
I have a part-time job undoing plaited knots at the barber's. Stop splitting hairs. Tell me what you want with me. I think it is you who need the services of my good self, Mr. Malloy. Do I look like I need a gigolo, you nonce? No, not those kind of services, old boy. I'm here to help you solve the mystery. That's a nice thought. Why did you come by this ungodly hour? Can't you solve crimes during the day? Are you a copper from the nocturnal division? Use your loaf, Malloy. Toast? How? No, use your brain. Brains on toast? You disgusting little man. Why should I do anything with you when the moment my back is turned, you crack open my brain pan on the breakfast table just to use my cerebral looms as breakfast preserves? I can see we could be here all night. So I'll just go ahead and show you this. And what's this supposed to be? It's called an address book. It's a book that contains the particulars of where people live. I know what an address book is, you goon. What's its significance? Well, it was at the crime scene, right under your very nose. If you'd been observant enough, you might have noticed it. Instead, you spent the evening picking hairs out of your fish supper. I went over that place with a fine tooth comb. Anyway, the book has names in it. They could be suspects. Maybe you should lean on them. That seems rather intimate. I'll just interrogate them instead. And so began my Christmas Eve investigation. I let Marley see himself out, then got dressed as quickly as I could and raced outside. This was something I came to regret, because when you run down a snow-covered street with socks on your hands and pants on your head, you think, maybe I should have taken my time. After I'd redressed, the first suspect was Ruth Serum, an habitual liar according to the phone book. Just like a toilet cubicle at a holiday camp, I had to be on my toes. How are you? Sorry to bother you at this hour, Mrs. Serum. I'm Private Investigator Jack Malloy. It was a case like any other, except it wasn't. I was standing at the door of a suspect in the Rinch case called Mrs. Serum. She opened the door and... Oh, terribly sorry, I slipped into narration mode there. It's a common occurrence with film noir private eyes. Well, you're not investigating my privates. Fuck off! Don't mind if I do, Mrs. Serum. May I hang my coat up? What? I know you're an habitual liar, Mrs. Serum. When you said bugger off, you actually meant come in. Well, uh, uh, what exactly are you investigating, Mr. Malloy? Well, it all started this morning when my boss, Lieutenant Dakowitz, said, I call to remind you that you agreed to work on Christmas Day. Highlights, please, Mr. Malloy. Mrs. Serum, you are in no position to make hairstyle suggestions to a private eye. Highlights, indeed. Who do you think I am? David Buncombe? It transpired that a bloke called Stan Rinch was hung from the ceiling with some tinsel, and his address book suggested you might be a suspect. So I want you to tell me what you were doing last night. Really? Yes, what you were really doing last night. I don't understand. Stan isn't the type of man who would let someone overpower him. Really? And what sort of lunatic would let someone overpower him? He wouldn't let them because he was a boxer. Interesting. How many boxes did he make? A boxer in the boxing ring. Now, do I look like someone who could overpower a boxer? I'll ask the questions here, Mrs. Siren. What were you doing when the crime was committed? Whereabouts? Yes, your whereabouts. No, whereabouts was the crime scene? The crime scene was his own living room. When was the last time you were there? Thursday. You can have a drink when you've answered my questions. What did, when did you last see him alive? Three days ago. He was arguing with his manager about something. I don't know what it was about, so I was only passing by. And what about last night? I didn't see him last night. I was in bed. How do I know? You're an habitual liar, Mrs. Scrotum. I'm taking everything you say with a pinch of salt. I think you better leave. 
Yes, I think you better have. You're the one who's supposed to leave. It's my bloody house. Oh, uh, right. Sorry about that.